live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at Dell EMC World 2017. This is theCUBE's coverage of Dell EMC, the combination, the big news here. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE and my co-host, Paul Gillen, and our next guest is Steve Fingerhut, Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Storage Product Business Unit at Toshiba, and Ravi Pentakanti, who's the uh, SVP of Server Solutions and Product Management at Dell EMC. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Good Thank to you, see you, John. Ravi. Steve, nice to meet you. Thanks for having us. Steve, so tell us what's going on at Toshiba, because I want to uh, hear what you guys are doing, and your role and relationship with Dell EMC, and what is going on with, with your architecture, because we've been hearing a ton about IoT at the edge, centralized pushing intelligence to the edge, new architectures. The world is kind of moving to a new architecture. What's your, what's your pitch? Sure, uh, well Dell and Toshiba have a long history, 20 plus years of uh, working and both, both strong innovators. Uh, we're engaged on both our hard drive products as well as our SSD products, really across every aspect of, of Dell's portfolio, client, server, and storage. And uh, we're really taking the architecture, both, both of those product categories are uh, you know, really popular as, as everyone, uh, you know, data explosion uh, is happening. A lot of that is, is uh, ending up on storage and uh, our focus areas there on hard drive are around the near line storage, which are the high capacity, eight terabyte and higher. Uh, really popular with uh, cloud architectures. We have uh, a 14 and 16 terabyte helium based drive coming out next year, which will put us in a strong leadership position and then on the SSD side, what we're highlighting uh, at the show uh, today is our latest generation NAND, and we've moved into 3D NAND, and we're, we're showing our a wafer with 64 layer 3D flash, as well as the first public demonstration of, of any company of an SSD using that 64 layer 3D flash. So we're, we're on that cutting edge, uh, and we see that really growing. And you mentioned IOT, uh, that's really driving a lot of the big data growth. That a lot of that data will reside on hard drives, right, for the for the long-term storage, but then you bring that into an SSD tier for the very rapid analytics work that you want to do to make decisions with that data. Steve, talk about the impact of the latest state of the art. To me, it's, oh my God, speeds and feeds. But storage, people always care about storage. I mean, go back to the original iPod, then iPhone. Things are in devices, and you mentioned IoT. The state of the art has to get better, faster, cheaper. What's the impact of some of those uh, specs that you guys just released in terms of this, the media and the SSD? What's the impact going to be for customers? Scenario-wise, what's some of the, uh, the, the impact going to look like? Sure, well I think the, the number one impact, um, as I talk to customers here at the event, and it's no surprise, but every- Give me more of that, they say. Every, every <laughs> customer, every Dell executive says, we need more. So really it's just the SSD uh, adoption has yes, exploded. Yes, we do need more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so that's exploding, and, and so the number one thing this will do is it's uh, the, the, each individual die on the wafer doubles in capacity. Uh, and then it will soon double again and double again after that. So this 3D technology really allows us to drive density and that means lower cost, it means more capacity, it also means we can, do, we can develop denser uh, SSD, so more in, a, in the same space or smaller space. So for the really consumer it's obvious, it's all the devices, the wearables, but yes. the business, it's really more fundamental than that. Things that are going to be connected to the network the microwave, the air conditioning, all the sensors in the, in the world are going to be now digitally connected, once analog, now digital. I mean, that's kind of where I, is that kind of, to get that right? Absolutely, and those are, that same technology will be used in a lot of end devices. It's in your smartphone, it's in your smartwatch, it'll be in a lot of those smart devices capturing the, the temporary data, but then that all gets consolidated uh, in, a, in a massive pool, and uh, companies are looking for how do they efficiently scale to capture and analyze that data and turn it into, uh, in, into revenue and profit. And that's where the performance of SSDs and even in the future, the higher capacity levels will allow efficient scaling uh, at, at the data center. Well, uh, in the, uh, Robbie, in the uh, hyperconverged market, now all of a sudden you've got the storage coming back into the server. Yep. Uh, what are customers looking for in terms of performance mm -hmm. on that storage side? Are they driving you for, for the same kind of constant uh, drive for more capacity and better performance? Absolutely, Paul. I mean, if you think about it, the workloads of today are vastly different than the workloads of the past. Think about it. I mean, today people are not looking for 
data to be just collected. Data is really, you know, it doesn't have the complete value, or in my view, it doesn't give you anything other than just lots of bits and bytes. What really gives you the power to act upon is the information. And so to create information, you need to take the data, go process it, and get you to the same, you know, to the level of detail that you can act upon, right? So that's the analytics engine. So having said that, today when you look at any of the industries, whether it's genomics, whether you're looking at machine learning, deep learning, these require a sense of performance to be provided for our customers because they're looking at analyzing data quickly enough and that's when they can act on it. So our customers absolutely are asking for better performance and higher capacity and they need it now. So Toshiba is not a new player to you though. You guys, they've been a supplier to the power oh, range, right? For absolutely true. I mean, they've been a fantastic supplier for the last 20 years. We look at them more as a partner. They've been with us through the journey. I mean, we've been, uh, you know, if you think about it, for the last couple of decades, we've been shipping a product and they've been working through us. We've been working together just not as, uh, you know, it's not really a, you know, it's not just a supplier kind of a relationship. We actually track the new technologies. Uh, you know, Steve just talked about the 3D cross point and, and uh, things of that kind. Uh, you know, we are work, working on those technologies together to ensure that we give our customers just not the latest technology, but also to provide them with the right price performance. Again, I emphasize price performance because it's just not one of them on its own that has made it to our customers. Is brand important to your customers in terms of a storage provider? Do they ask for Toshiba brand, or does it matter? What they do ask for is, they ask for reliability, right? They want to make sure that they have a reliable product. And then, if you think about it, that really translates to them to certain vendors. So yes, they could have a potential you know, propensity for a certain vendor, but it all starts with reliability. If you really can't have a reliable uh, you know, uh, component in the in the servers that we sell, it really doesn't help our customers, and and that's where you know it goes back to the point I was making earlier, which is there's this long-standing relationship with the companies because we have built that reliability into the product, and Toshiba has been providing it for us. Uh, Steve, talk about the relationship with SSD and the enterprise. I mean, everyone knows people want more solid state. That's everyone kind of sees the consumer products. Where's the progress bar in terms of adoption? Because we, I hear stories and we actually report them on SiliconANGLE that this, I'm buying capacity <laughs> of all flash drives. Servers certainly has their share of, of flash as well. David Floyer and Wikibon have been covering that for years. But now in the enterprise and all the other mainstream products, where's the, where's the, the analogy here? What's the, what's the tipping point? Are we there? Or? Well, from a, if you look at it from a uh, dollar spent perspective, actually this year is the crossover where enterprise SSDs uh, will consume uh, a higher amount of the spend than enterprise hard drives. So uh, people are putting their spinning money. Spinning disk, you mean. Uh, exactly, the old hard drives, spinning, spinning old rust. Rust. And uh. so <laughs> that, that crossover will, you know, will happen, uh, has happened if we had more supply, if the industry had more supply, I'm sure it would have already happened. Uh, now, if you look at it from a um, gigabytes perspective, though, of course, hard drives are much, much, uh, are still the vast majority of the bits shipped. And so it really is about that uh, intelligent use of flash. It's, it's, it's fast, it's uh, uh, very reliable, it consumes less power, but it is also more expensive. So you, yeah. you have to pick the right applications or the right uh, ways of deploying those, and that's where uh, Dell and Toshiba work together with partners like uh, VMware. We're, we're talking about a certified uh, solution around Toshiba, Dell, uh, VMware vSAN, as well as Nutanix. And both of those solutions uh, in a converged architecture, and hyper-converged architecture, they rely on SSDs in every node to ensure you get the, the, the performance scaling. The SSDs have been exciting because sort of hard disk performance peaked out about 10 years ago and we've been, we've been sort of jury rigging ways to make it faster, but SSDs genuinely are, uh, are getting faster and faster. What is the upper limit on, on speed right now? Are we looking at Moore's Law type of, uh, type of growth in performance or, or does that, that top out at some point? We, uh, we, can, we get to saturating the interface uh, with, with performance, but I'll, I'll tell you the most customers aren't asking us for more more IOPS performance or more bandwidth, certainly they'll take it, but when you put several of these in a server or a storage box, it's, it's more than the interface can consume. So uh, certainly there's been, if you, if you look at the by segment type of growth rates, uh, it's, it's moving into the how cheap can we make it, uh, can we reduce the endurance, it's still plenty fast, 
and that uh, kind of opening that up. But that's a that's a growing tier, um, and so we're we're really seeing that kind of good enough performance driving a yeah. lot of the expansion. Robbie, talk about the architectural challenges. I was joking with Dave Vellante a couple cube uh, weeks ago about. Dell, talk about, oh Dell, the supply chain was their big innovation, everyone kind of knows that story of how they, mm -hmm. I said data's the new supply chain, right? So uh, data is now coming in, you got the form factor on the storage memory, yep. which everyone wants more SSDs, give me more, we heard that. How are you guys going to build your server architecture to handle the tsunami of data coming in from stuff that this is going to enable? I mean, everything in a business will be instrumented with data, Devices Absolutely. and sensors are coming in. Yep. Is there a server for that? And how do you think it's about streaming. that? It's a moving yeah. train yes, architecturally. Yes. So what are you guys doing? Give us so, an overview. Uh, it's interesting that you asked, John, because when we look at uh, a server today, it does have to deal with lots of data coming in. And, and, and it's just not data, but if you look at it, the, there are, we used to talk about storage tiering, now I think we got to start looking at memory tiering, right? And what this means is, we have to fundamentally change the way the architecture of the system is put in place. And for example, at 14G, we, have, we are now coming out with one of our more important tenants, it's, it's, it's all about scalable business architecture. Again, this goes into the whole premise of, as the, we talk about the workloads, as workloads change, you talk about IoT, you talk about you know, how all the data is coming in, you got to synthesize it. You also now need to have an architecture that essentially says, I have to go get this data in and get it at the right time. It's not just getting it, getting data in. So we are working on things called MCA, which is memory-centric architectures. Because end of the day, it's 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 analogous to, and I, I'm from California, right? I mean, we have you know the Bay Area, we have the 101 that kind of is the nerve of the entire Bay Area. Uh, and it's crowded. It, we need more. It's, it's crowded. It's flying cars. There's a lot of cars. bottlenecks. I, I, absolutely right. <laughs> I/O problems. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they need faster go. IOPS. And <laughs> it's Elon a, Musk is going to figure this out. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that's the goal, right? So as, they, as he figures it out, we on the server side are trying to do the same thing, which is as more data, like like more cars are on the road. We now have to go out and ensure that the connectivity between your memory subsystem, your storage subsystem, and the CPU actually comes out to be. A, a low latency, high bandwidth kind of a solution, which is what goes back into what I call as the memory-centric architectures. So that's essentially what we're working on to ensure that we have an optimal performance at the application level, because that's what customers really well, care. Well, what is tiered memory, and is that actually a thing now in, in the 14G server? It's, it's uh, so tiered memory is something that, I mean, I'm, I'm, we are setting the stage for the future, right? So, uh, we talk about tiered storage. We had tier one, tier two, tier three storage, wherein if data was not being utilized, you basically took the data, put it on the tapes, for example, right? In the current generation, a lot of people use hard drives as a way of putting data out. So likewise in memory, I mean, if you really think about it, you, know, you have the registers, you've got the L1 cache, L2 cache, you've got those caches. Then we are coming into all kinds of uh, NVMe drives. So that's what I mean by kind of tiering we have to deal with. There is normal memory, you've got persistent memory, right? So those are the new memory technologies. And by the way, state and stateless in. cloud native really in microservices yes. use state and stateless apps. You have to differentiate between the two and SSD is great Absolutely. for that. Yes, so this is where, as going back to your question Paul is, that's the way, I think we are in the early stages of how we evolve, so that's where you'll see we're going to support uh, not, you know, persistent memory, for example. When people look at SAP HANA, they want to have memory, uh, you know, it's basically in-memory database. So these are the kind of things we're doing. So with 14G, for example, we are working on things like that. We'll have 14, I mean, about 19X uh, more NVMe than we had in the prior generation. I wish I could get into more specifics, but we will do yeah. as we get into the, the formal uh, shipment of the product. But the ship again, is in the summer though, right? This yes, summer, right. that hurts? It's, it's a uh, summer. Of summer time frame, a few months away. Yeah. Okay, talk about the relationship between you guys, obviously your partners. Yep. Uh, this is a significant component. Um, you know, I would worry about as a customer, uh, availability concerns, allocation of uh, product. Are we good? Supply, solid? I don't mean to put you on the spot. No, absolutely, it's a, it's a great yeah, question. Let's put you on the spot, we need more. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, it's a great question. Get and, the checkbook uh, out. And it is. I get a commission. You know, it's, <laughs> it's a great teamwork. Uh, you think about it like the great uh, teams in history, the Jordan, Pippen, uh, you know, they, they've worked together, they've Bird worked McHale. out all the kinks. Exactly, <laughs> and they, they, they can anticipate each other's next steps, and that's really, 
how we're operating. Ravi mentioned that you know, we've worked hard to make sure we have product alignment up and down. We, and and the, the next is Dell Technologies has massive scale, so aligning the supply chains is key, and we've done that to make sure we have the right products in the right place for Dell's customers. Um, but in terms of supply, uh, yeah, it really is about getting to that next generation where we can double our capacity per wafer or even more in some cases, so that'll really allow us to uh, you know, open the spigots and we, we think you know, 2018 is going to be a And the really impact to customers, guys, just comment on uh, the relationship. What's going to be the impact to your customers? So, uh, first and foremost, I mean, uh, jokes apart, I know we know about the constraints in the industry on, on SSD drives. I mean, that's an industry-wide thing. So, uh, one of the things we have been doing uh, with Toshiba is we have, have, we have regular interlock meetings and we discuss where the demand is and we help forecast where we are headed and we actually work through the process. So, uh, and uh, we do anticipate that's something that Steve's team and, and our, our teams will be doing together. And, uh, it's not new for Dell, this is their wheelhouse. It is, yeah. it is, but, but I will tell you, John, given the constraints we had in the industry, I, I, I must say that in the last couple of quarters, we had to put a lot more emphasis on how we go deal with this because, you know, going back to the prior comments that both you gentlemen made, there is, there is such a demand for the SSDs right now that you know, I wish the supply and demand were not out of balance, but they are, right? We got to work through and try to ensure that we don't surprise them as, as partners, so we don't come back and say, hey, you know what, give us a truckload tomorrow. So that's something that we are actually finishing. And they're shaping your strategy too, because they're, they're an indicator to where you can go based upon yes. the tech, the state of the art, Absolutely, this is where I call is it's a, it's a constant feedback mechanism we have built. Yeah. I mean, they, they know the, the, the SSD drive market, the NAND flash technologies better than we do, right? They do. And then we understand the overall customer side and what the impact is and from the compute side, for example, in our case. And now we go back in and try and see how we can do a, a better mechanism of shaping the demand and ensuring that the right uh, uh, you know, product is available at the well, right is time. Is there relief in sight for, these, for the shortages? I think it's going to be linked to those next generation technologies as we ramp those and get them into production, into SSDs and into Dell EMC systems, then you will see the, uh, the, the balance come back in the year, industry. Years, three years, less? Uh, that's, I think most people are saying it's going to last through this year. We're obviously working very hard yeah. to, to get uh, you know, the right products in the right place, but uh, I think most people are saying it'll last through this year, but, but yeah. we'll see. Hard to predict. I think that's the consistent message we get is at least you know, three to four quarters yeah. before things stabilize. Well, Ravi, yes. congratulations on the scale. I think it's a huge advantage and certainly you get some great supplier relationships with that scale. Congratulations, Steve, on the state of the art, new stuff coming, more faster, come on, bring it on. Absolutely. Internet, Internet of Things is waiting. That market is it waiting is. for you guys. Yeah. So it congratulations, is. thanks for coming on theCUBE, no, appreciate sharing thank the you. insights. I mean, we couldn't have uh, found a better partner as we announced our 14G and we're excited about it. And thank you for having us, both John yeah. and Paul. Thank you very much. Great yeah. stuff. Thank you Dell very much. Dell EMC bringing the state of the art uh, content here on theCUBE, but more importantly, faster memory, SSDs in the enterprise, taking over the hard disk drive, certainly a ton of data, a tsunami of data coming in from all angles, IOT in the enterprise, everywhere else. It's theCUBE sharing our data with you. We'll be right back with more live coverage. Stay with us. Oh!